Good afternoon and welcome to Election Brief. We're live on DSTV Channel 4 to 1, Go TV Channel 1 to 5, across all our social media platforms and around the world at myjournalline.com. Election Headquarters is brought to you by Petrosol Platinum Energy, Energizing Dreams, the Chartered Institute of Management Accountants, and the American Institute of Certified Public Accountants, together as the Association of International Certified Professional Accountants, as well as Chopbox Technologies, a convenient service and youth bridge foundation bridging the gap for positive youth development. My name is Faustina. We'll be back with details. Dr. George Akufa Dampari has issued a stern warning to political parties and other stakeholders within the electoral system to desist from taking the law into their hands as the country prepares for the 2024 general elections. The EC will, from tomorrow, exhibit the voters' register as the nation jests towards the polls. Speaking during a meeting with the EC chairperson, Dr. George Akufa Dampari explained the police will be deploying all exhibition centres will be deployed to all exhibition centers and will also take a tough stance against anyone who tries to cause trouble during the process. In terms of the voter exhibition, voter register exhibition that we are working on starting from tomorrow, we want to give the assurance that across the 38,622 polling stations, we are deploying at all the places and we have rapid response team to go and also manage any situation with de-escalation mindset. So that at the end of the day, with the seven to eight days exercise that we are going to have, it will be successful, it will be peaceful, and it will add something positive to all the positives we have achieved as a country for ourselves and for the African continent. We want to also want to use this to urge all the stakeholders, especially the political parties, that all the issues, all the concerns that they may have in the course of this part of the process, they should ensure that we use due process of engagement of within the law to handle every situation. We don't want to see any situation where anybody will make an attempt to take the law into his or her own hands. If that happens, we will work within the law to deal with the situation. And we ask the good people of this country to support us in this regard. Because we will not allow any individual or group of individuals to affect, to do anything that affects the sanctity of the peace, security, law, and order of this country. Because we say it time without number. Ghana, and this Ghana, is the only place that we have, is the only place we can walk and with our chest out, because that's where we belong. Kwekwa Santi is a member of our political deck. He joins us live with more. Kwekwa, I know that the IGP has also been expressing the readiness of the police and allied security agency for the election. What details did he provide? Well, first of all, for the next eight days, there's going to be the voter exhibition exercise, and then following that, a number of um, really key issues will be done mm. ahead of the general election. According to Dr. George Akupo Dampare, mm. his men and that of the various allied security services are really ready to deploy to ensure that the election is peaceful, is transparent, and fair. Mm. I know that the EC also says it will ensure a free and fair election. How do they plan to do this? Well, um, according to Dr. Boss Manasari, the EC is very much committed to that. We know that the NDC and other political parties have been demanding that the EC publish the provisional voters register. According to Dr. Bos Manasara, and in fact they've been addressing a news conference just about a while ago, he says the provisional voters register has now been released to the political parties and that even the NDC have come in for their copy as of the time the news conference was being addressed by his good self. And so that has been that has been done ahead of the, the voter exhibition exercise starting from tomorrow the twentieth up until the twenty seventh of um, August. And According to Dr. Bos Manasari, all is said to ensure that the processes that will lead up to the 2024 election is generally transparent and is free and fair. Mm. 
Mm, thank you, Kukwa Asante, of our political decks there for giving us details on that. Let's do some other stories now. The MPP flag bearer, Dr. Baumia, is looking at implementing at least nine major wide-ranging tax reforms if elected president. Key among them is the scrapping of the electronic levy and betting tax. He also plans to digitize all aspects of the country's tax administration to reduce leakages. We'll analyze some of these propositions shortly. First, here's Samuel Mbura with a wrap of the MPP manifesto launch. Flag bearer of the new patriotic party, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia unveiled a list of innovative ideas to transform the country if elected. He prioritized supporting the business community with tax rebates and incentives and pledged to operate a lean government with less than 50 ministers to ensure fiscal discipline. The MPP manifesto comprehensively addressed all thematic areas aiming to transform the economy. Dr. Baumia emphasized his ultimate goal of creating employment. To the Gen Z's, I am well plugged into the new world you belong. And I know the keys to press to unlock your potentials within. I am your plug to your dreams of a prosperous Ghana. He also highlighted his track record as vice president as proof of his ability to deliver. I believe that as vice president, the policies I have championed or initiated have impacted or will impact the lives of virtually every Ghanaian. I have, with the full blessings and support of my boss, promised and delivered on many groundbreaking policies. His running mate, Dr. Maito Poku Prempe, expressed his readiness to work with the grassroots to secure the victory. For those, for those who have skeletons in their cupboard, for those who have skeletons in their cupboards and think the election is far gone for them, Dr. Bamudu Bamumia will win the 7th December general election and presidential election. We, we, Kukudites, will fight from room to room, house to house, village to village, community to community, that never again, that never again will we have done so. President Akufado, visibly impressed by the ideas presented by Dr. Baumia and his running mate, had this to say. These are the two people who are asking for the mandate of the Ghanaian people. I have no hesitation as the outgoing president is saying that they will be worthy successors to the office of president and vice president. So I want all of you here to make sure that when the results are declared, Hopefully on the 8th of December, we will hear the sweet news. The sixth president of the fourth republic, Mahamadou Baumia, has won a clear victory. The president did not end his speech without taking a swipe at former president John Mahama, drawing a comparison between Mahama's leadership and Dr. Baumia's vision. This is a man who has respect for the people of Ghana. This is not a man who is going to tell the Ghanaian people that you have short memories. That is not the kind of man we have here. That is not the type of man we have here. He's a man who has respect for the people of Ghana. This is not somebody who is going to say to the Ghanaian people when his policies have failed that I am not a magician. That is not the language of Mahadu Baumia. That is not the sort of person that he is. 
Well, today on Election Brief, we'll be fleshing out the key proposition of the NPP. What are they promising with regards to the country's housing sector? As we analyze the feasibility of some of these promises and interrogate government's implementation plan. Well, joining me shortly in the studio would be Manasseh Atabwahi, his spokesperson for the Ministry of Works and Housing. We'll get into that shortly. Before then, our research team has teased out some of the key policies that the NPP is promising to implement in the housing sector if elected to stay the affairs of the country. And that's coming up on your screens right now. One key promise is to provide houseless, homeless shelters for the vulnerable. They're also promising to expand rental assistance scheme for low income workers. They're promising affordable housing through district housing projects. Now we'll get into the dynamics and how they plan to do this. They are also promising to expand and continue to use the National Rental Assistance Scheme. They are promising to roll out a national housing program which will incentivize the private sector to close the housing gap within 10 years. Well, these are some of the key promises they are pro making, and Manasse joins me in the studio. I'm quite interested in the housing scheme for homeless people. You're promising shelters. How would that work? What would be the criteria for enjoying this facility? A very good afternoon to you, and good afternoon to our cherished viewers. And mm. Yesterday was indeed a fantastic and a glorious day, because the NPP, led by Al-Haji, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, you know, we launched our 2024 manifesto. And the very essence of it is that for every sector, we have outlined what we seek to do for the Ghanaian people to ensure that we are able to bring some more respite and to grow the economy together. And so sector specific on mm. housing, our theme is access to housing for all, access mm. to housing for all. And you know, when you look at the nature of our Ghanaian economy, you realize that we have categories of people. We have just about 5% who belong to the rich class and around 65% who belong to the middle class, and you have some people at the lower belt. And so what we seek to do is to ensure that even in rolling out housing policies, we do not leave out those who are at the bottom and even those who are in the middle. That's how come the issue of social housing comes in, to ensure that even for the homeless, for people who have nowhere to lay their heads, We'll be able to put up some structures to ensure that we are able to accommodate them. We have, mm. when, you, when you travel outside, for example, you would find you know, certain homes where you just go in with your belongings, you sleep overnight, and you pack out with your things. Mm. You just pay just meager fees, and that's what we seek to do, so that the incidences of people sleeping in our various bar stops amongst others will be a thing of the past. And that's how come we'll be able to target those who fall within the lower belt of the Ghanaian economy. And again, we also seek to expand the affordable housing project mm. to ensure that we are able to rake in the private sector. You see, government alone cannot build all the houses we, we seek to provide. Mm. Today, when you look at a housing deficit, it stands at around 1.8 million housing units. And that is so huge. On average, between the private sector and the government sector, we are able to build some 40,000 housing units. But you agree with me that that is inadequate mm. to meet our housing needs. And that's how come government is leveraging on the private sector to ensure that we are able to expand our coverage to build more houses, more affordable housing projects, more social housing projects, and more district housing, most importantly. Mm. Today, when you travel to most of our rural communities and even mm. some districts, sometimes you would find public servants being posted to these districts. They will go just... Yeah, profile the place and they'll come back and tell you, no, I can't live here, I can't work here. Yeah. Simply because they cannot find decent accommodation just to live in. And so what we are doing, uh, and what Al-Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia has mentioned as part of his policies, is to ensure that we will deepen the provision of our district housing projects. Mm. To ensure that going forward, we have so many decent and livable you know, housing units, even in the various rural communities, to ensure that once you are posted there, you would have the joy to work because you have a nice and a befitting place to lay your head. And so I'm quite interested in what would be the geographic distribution of some of these shelters for homeless people. Do you already have a plan? What areas will, will you be using to erect these shelters and what would be the criteria for me to benefit from it? In fact, so when you talk of the social housing, mm. the one we are building for 
those who just want to do overnight stay and, and leave. Mm. We would do segmentation of the various regions and even districts. You would agree with me that when you look at all the 16 regions, Greater Accra region, Ashanti region, Eastern, Western and Central, some few others would have high incidences of people who would need more of these social housing projects. Mm. And so a critical profiling will be done to ensure, and even we would even collect data on this. I'm sure this is, it's been done already, to know the number of people who would need such facilities, even across the various constituencies and even regions. And that would inform, the data that we will get will inform the number of projects you know, we'll be able to put up to ensure that even for people who belong to such class, they would have befitting areas for them to be able to lodge and move to do their various How do government plan to fund this? In fact, the major challenge over the period, especially as it relates to our housing projects, has been the old trend and the old framework where government would be the sole financier of these projects. And that explains why over the period mm. you would notice that whenever there is a change in government, most of these housing projects are, are stalled because of the change in government and lack of funds. Mm. And so what we seek to do and what al Hadi, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is promising to do is to ensure that we bring in the private sector, master developers, those who have experience in building mass affordable housing projects across the country. And once we are able to bring them in, they would help for us to meet our needs. What government will have to do then, and what al Hadi, Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya is promising, is that he would ensure that the incentives that he, his administration will provide to these master developers will be so attractive to the extent that when these master developers weigh their options across Africa and even in, in, in the world at large, Ghana will be a good place for them to bring in you know, their foreign direct investment to ensure that they are able to invest more in the housing project. And so it is mentioned that, for example, land banks, <coughs> excuse me, government has a lot of you know, land at its disposal. And so most often than not, if a private developer is coming in to build, and that private developer would have to, you know, come through the market to even purchase lands. You know how our land tenure system is. Sometimes one land could be sold to about three, four, five developers, and there are always litigation on our lands. And so His Excellency al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Bamiya has promised that under his leadership, come 2025, he will ensure that government would leverage on some of its land to serve as equity so mm. that once you're a master developer and you are coming in to build, you wouldn't have to go through the stress, you know, of chasing people, you know, going, getting land, fighting with land gas and all these bureaucratic processes. And so lands will be provided. Again, you notice that for people who build on, on, on large scale, mm. most often than not, or in most cases, they import a lot of heavy equipment, and other materials to facilitate their building. And so he mentioned again in his policy that he's going to ensure that we give them tax rebates so that once they are bringing in these items and equipment for the purposes of the mass uh, construction, they will not pay any you know, uh, import duty on this. And, and so I believe that these are part of the things that will ensure that at the end, the final price point of the various housing units to ensure that they are affordable will be achieved. Mm. Because one, the cost of land will be taken out because government will provide you land for it to serve as equity. Mm. So that at the end, if government, his government is able to give you, let's say, 1,000 acres, and you, you put up, let's say, 5,000 housing units, government can then take a share of about, let's say, rough, maybe some 200 or 300 or whatever uh, units. Again, al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumier's government has mentioned that he's going to ensure that there are synergies amongst the various ministries. Mm. What do I mean by this? If a master developer is building in an area, and that same master developer will be the one to pay for the construction of auxiliary roads, if it is the same developer who would have to pay for the extension of electricity, pay for the extension of water, pay for uh, you know, other, other basic amenities, it will add up to the cost of the final uh, housing units. And so building synergies will mean that the various ministries the Ministry of Energy through the Electricity Company of Ghana would come in to provide electricity or to extend electricity to such mass housing uh, projects. The Ministry of Roads and Highways will also come in to work on the auxiliary roads or the roads within the communities. The Ministry of Water Resources will also come in to provide or to extend water 
to these communities. And the Ministry of Works and Housing will also come in to provide sewage systems, among others. And all these will be done with the aim of ensuring that once the housing projects are done, mm. the cost mm. would come down. So once government is able to bring in equity and all these, all these incentives, government will then have a strong footing to ensure that it's able to negotiate for the prices to come down for it to be affordable. You made mention of expanding the current housing schemes and rent schemes that were currently being, that's been rolled out by this government. How do you plan to do that and who would be the target this time? In fact, so currently this government, you know, brought the National Rental Assistance Scheme to provide support to people who would need assistance to ensure they are able to pay their rent advance so that every month they would also pay it in bits and pieces. What al Haji Dr. Mahmoud Baumia is saying is that he will expand the National Rental Assistance Scheme. Today, the National Rental Assistance Scheme covers about six regions. But for the purposes of equity, it will be important for it to be expanded to all the 16 regions mm. to ensure that once you are working and once you need assistance for government to come in and pay your rent for full, whether six months, a year, or two years, you would have that assistance and the amount to be deducted uh, monthly. Government will leverage again on the private sector to do this. Uh, currently, we have the National Home Ownership Fund, and that will also be expanded so that when it comes to the issues of mortgages and even those who would need help from the National Rental Assistance Scheme, all these support will be there to ensure that we will be able to have some more respite, especially in the housing sector. You pledged to make mortgage more accessible to the mm. low-income earners in the country. How do you plan to achieve this? Absolutely. So now when you look at the mortgage system, or typically of, of, of a Ghanaian community, mm. today when people want to buy facilities or let's say houses or even lands, people want to pay at once. And that is highly untypical of, of, of the foreign world. <laughs> when you travel outside, you realize that people purchase cars and some basic items, even through mortgages, especially land, especially houses. And so we would ensure that one, the interest, interest that the central bank, you know, would offer loans or facilities to banks that would be offering mortgages to Ghanaians. One, the interest on such loans from the central bank to these banks will have to be lowered. Mm. And once that is done, it will then enable these commercial banks to be able to lower the interest at which they will provide facilities to workers who would need mortgages to be able to acquire properties. Second, there is a National Home Ownership Fund which would be extended to bring in more funding and that will also allow people who would want to access the funds you know, for cheaper uh, fund financing to be able to have access to that, to be able to purchase you know, houses and even lands on, 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 and to ensure that they're able to pay it at lower or reduced interest rates. And that's the only way we believe we'll be able to do this to ensure that going forward, it wouldn't be the case that you would have to take a chunk of your salary, you know, just to pay for some of these. Then it makes it difficult for people to even meet up with their basic demands. That's how come we are leveraging on the National Home Ownership Fund, the private sector, and even some banks that will be set up, construction banks, housing banks that may be set up to ensure that when it comes to the issue of access to cheap credit, to be able to have access even to, for mortgages, that would be on the low side, so that it will attract um, some more people, more Ghanaians, to be able to purchase these houses as well. You also speak of a rent-to-own scheme. How would this operate? Will it operate independently from the existing scheme? In fact, so the rent-to-own scheme is also very critical. Most often than not, you would find uh, most master developers putting up structures. And sometimes when you look at the cost of it, it may be difficult for people to you know, purchase these houses or housing units outright. And so there will be another option to ensure that should you decide or should you intend to purchase you know, the housing unit at a future date, you would be given the opportunity to even rent. So as you rent, there will be an allowance for you to make certain payments to ensure that within a certain time frame, you are able to you know, pay for the actual cost of it in bits and pieces. So mm. that within maybe 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, you stay in the house, you pay rent, you pay additional you know, funding for that, and before you could say, Jack, 
the property is yours. Manasseh, stay with us because I'll come back to you for your concluding mm -hmm. remarks. Let me bring in the Deputy General Secretary of the NDC, Mustafa Gwande. He joins us via Zoom with a reaction to this. The future NDC government is promising to provide shelters for homeless people, expand the rental assistance scheme for low-income workers. Mm -hmm. They're also promising to make mortgage financing more accessible to low- and middle-income families. What's the initial reaction to these promises? Good afternoon to our cherished listeners and an afternoon to my colleague in the... Yes, please make your point, Bandi. The studio. I think that basically... We seem to be losing connection to you, Mr. Fagbano. You have to position rightly. The NEC is just joining us with the thoughts about the major promises that the MPP is making to the people. Key amongst them is provide shelters for the homeless. Mr. Fagbani, I'm hoping to have better connection to you. Please make your point. I only resonate with one fact. Promises. Hello. Yes, so I'm just saying that <clears throat> MPP have gone to assemble words, ideas. Unfortunately, we don't seem to, to have connection him. to him. He's back? Okay. Mustafa, unfortunately, your connection isn't favorable, and so we're losing you intermittently. You have to position rightly. I'll come to Manasseh in the studio as we wrap up the conversation. Why should we be confident that some of these key promises would be implemented, and it's not just pen on paper? Well, so Ghanaians should be confident and they should repose more hope in the party, the new patriotic party, simply because today, when you look at the significant progress we have made, especially in the housing sector, it is unprecedented. Today, the security services alone can boast of a thousand housing units that we have done. In fact, when we came into power in 2017, the housing deficit stood around some two million housing units. Because of the initial framework where you would find government alone doing most of the housing projects with little support or not too much opportunity for the private sector to have a lot of incentives for them to bring in some more funding and expertise. Uh, we've been able to reduce the housing deficit by some 200,000 housing units, but that is not enough. And so we want to build on the foundation we have laid. We want to build on the public-private partnership framework that we have laid where we'll be shifting from the total government funding to leverage on the funding capacities of the master developers to ensure that once government is able to provide them you know, with a lot of incentives that will attract them. And so we want to demonstrate to Ghanaians that this is what we've done. This is the foundation we have laid. We are rolling out the district housing project to ensure that in almost every district we would have various housing units for people to be able to live and work comfortably. We are also seeking to roll out the social housing projects to provide shelter for the vulnerable in the society. And we want to demonstrate to Ghanaians that they should repose more confidence to us to continue on the foundation that we have laid to ensure mm. we are able to bring more successes to that. I'm told I have better connection now to Mustafa Gwande. As we wrap up, please share with us your initial reaction to the MPP's manifesto launch. Well, our initial, initial reaction is that the MPP recycled themselves, themselves in uh, Takrade to package a second version of life. Number one, if the MPP tells you that tomorrow I will build houses for people for free, it sounds very nice, but please ask them what happened to the one village, one dam, the agenda, one, one project. Oh dear, the internet connection hasn't been favorable. Mustafa Gwandi, I'm sure we'll raise him in subsequent bulletin as we get other political parties' reaction. Thank you, Manase, for making it in the studio. This is Election Brief. Have a pleasant day as you enjoy the rest of our programs. <laughs>